know, we're just sitting here and, and we're going over we're going over some of the things that um, are being said by Barack Obama Jr. And because they're still bringing up this this stupid um, uh, marathon marathon time, time with ridiculous with, with Paul Ryan and they're 22 saying, years ago. You're a numbers guy. You should know this, right? A numbers guy and you're a sports guy. Well, isn't Barack Obama supposedly one of the greatest sports fans, Chicago sports fans ever of all time? I mean, let's just talk about how the guy doesn't know any sports. Don't get me wrong. Barack Obama didn't grow up in the United States. His father never watched sports on TV. I'm not a sports guy. I don't try to pretend I'm a sports guy. I don't know anything about it. But what little I do know, I learned from my father being there and and what being with my father when he would watch sports. So I at least know some of that. Barack Obama, this is just another example of him not being like us. He's not, and there's nothing wrong with that, but he's just not, um, he doesn't have the American heritage that we all have. He didn't go to Fourth of July celebrations when he was a kid. Yeah, and you're not saying this is a negative. I no, think it, just, it's a strength just, of his personal story to overcome those things. Just clarify. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, show you if this is who you grew up as, you didn't know, you didn't watch American sports, you didn't go to 4th of July, you would have a deficit to make up. Now, you could either embrace that and say, look, I, I never went to a 4th of July thing. I, I never, I didn't watch football with my dad. I'm not a sports fan. And you could try to be honest about it, or you could so look down on the American people and say, well, they're never going to accept me because I'm different. And so I've got to fill in all of that. And you'd make stuff up. I contend that's exactly what he did. Listen just to the sports fan um, uh, segments here. Uh, close to uh, what was then Kaminsky Park, right? And we went to a couple games and just fell in love. And the nice thing about the Sox is it's real blue-collar baseball. And, of course, it's not Kaminsky. It's Kaminsky. Yeah, I do think that there's a different quality to what used to be Kaminsky Field versus Wrigley. Okay, then it, there he goes, Kaminsky Field versus Okay, Wrigley. now see, Kaminsky me, Park. I thought it was okay. Kaminsky. I didn't know. Yeah, it's Comiskey. And Field Park wouldn't know which one. But this one. is supposed but a sports fan would. So that's a, the difference. Oh, and especially and it, from Chicago. Yeah, a guy whose favorite team plays at that field. You don't Correct. know the name of it? Correct. Come on. I, I thought... Oh, here, here he's asked by Rob Dibble, a uh, famous ex-baseball, Major League Baseball pitcher, to name his favorite White Sox player. I, I thought that, uh, you know... The truth is that a lot of the Cubs I like, too. Uh, but uh, I did not become a Sox fan until I moved to Chicago. He can't name a single player. Not one. In fact, instead, he goes to Cubs. Well, I, I like the Cubs, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, name me one of those. Then he goes on to name the Oakland Athletics because he grew up in Hawaii. Well, name me one of those because there's quite a few uh, pretty prominent and famous I don't know Hall of Fame Oakland Athletic players. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I could do what Jose Canseco was he? Uh, he was a yes, little, was. little later era, but yeah, yeah. I yes, mean, I, was. I mean, that's the only one I can actually mm -hmm. pull out. I mean, I, I can at least pull one out. To me, this is the most egregious because apparently, supposedly, he's a huge basketball fan, right? I mean, they get him to pick the brackets every year for the NCAA. Mm -hmm. He ha he always has yes. the sports teams. I mean, he plays basketball. But and listen to this: World champion Miami Heat's. The Miami Heat's. Heats. No one, no sports fan. Okay, so calls boy, them you, you the wrong name. Because I would disagree and say that's not the most egregious. The other one uh, from the state, great state of Pennsylvania. Okay, uh, uh, it would have to be to me the most because it's so anyone. I mean, it's just so no, crazy. This one's Penn State right here. Nidalee Lions. The, the Nidalee Lions. Nidalee Lions. You think that's worse than the Heats? I think it is. It's pretty bad. Okay, so the only reason why we're bringing this up is because this guy is a complete and total fraud. Mm -hmm. He is not who he says he is. And it's not just about sports. It's about everything. Play the flag drape coffin. The, the press wants to pay attention to 
Paul Ryan and the stupid marathon time mm -hmm. when they won't look into something like this. Listen carefully to this. It's the founding ideals that the flag draped over my father's coffin stand for. Excuse me? Okay, you're talking about American values. And your father, who's buried in Kenya. He had an American flag. He hated uh, America. Come on. He had an American flag draped over his coffin in Kenya. Nobody for asks. what? Nobody he, asks. He didn't serve in the military of the United States of America. Did he love America so much he hated it? Did he have such a passion against this country that he wanted to make sure that it was touching the ground and under the ground while he was buried? What was the reason for having a flag over your father's coffin? Just remember, the Supreme Court just was asked to rule on faking uh, any kind of military service. Here's the commander-in-chief using a flag-draped coffin mm -hmm. on an easily verifiable mm -hmm. lie. And what happens? Nothing. They don't even look into it. But Paul Ryan's a numbers guy. 22 years ago, he got that he got that that marathon time wrong. And uh, <laughs> there's something that we should look into because that's not right.